On the profile interview segment this week, I'll be speaking with the Chairman of the Senate Committee on Labor, Employment and Productivity, Senator Plank Duquette. He brings us up to speed on activities of the National Assembly as regards workers' welfare and social protection. Take a listen. It's good to have you on the program. Thank you so much. A lot has been happening in the world of work, and you are the chairman of the Senate Committee on uh, Labor and Productivity. Can you bring us up to speed what it has been like serving as the chairman of this committee? I am a senator representing the good people of Plateau Central, Central District. And um, by the special grace of God, I'm the chairman of the Senate Committee on Employment, Labor, and productivity, and the vice chairman of the Senate Committee on Federal Character. Now, the portfolio of my office is about a section of Nigerians that carries a very large section, sector of the country, employee, and not just public empl employees or public employers both public and private sector employers. It deals with the employer and the employee. And it's more about the welfare, the safety, and the social protection of the Nigerian worker, whether in private or in the public service of our dear country, Nigeria. The responsibilities are high because as a legislator, I don't just have the job of appropriation and lawmaking. I have a job or a responsibility of oversight. Whatever is appropriated, whatever the law tells, I must ensure that the system operates in accordance to the laws establishing the place and the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. A uh, fundamental human right of individuals, a right to talk, a right to communicate, to express himself, the protection of his life is in the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Then you come back to the, to the, to the parliamentary act establishing the organizations or the public sector that are after you. For me, in labor and productivity and employment, and also have a way of um, understanding their operations and listening to them too. We know our laws and laws are dynamic. Find out how productive are our laws in terms of the mission or the various organizations, whether the law is making them is helping them to succeed in the mission of the MDAs. And as I told you, the world is dynamic, our laws are dynamic. Wherever we find there's a need to repeal and then reenact a law that will suit and make the system productive, we have the responsibilities. And this can only be understood when there's a close relationship between we, the lawmakers, the legislators, and the administrative staff who are members of the executive. When we relate, we get to know. And we watch their books to find out whether they're meeting up targets too. Naturally, when um, a law is about to be passed, we know that there is the stage whereby you would have a public hearing. And um, there are different stakeholders that are expected to come over to have that conversation on, um, and put in their inputs before a final decision is made. Um, personally, as a journalist, I, my observation is we do not have many stakeholders coming together to lend their voice. So I would like to ask you, what would be your message to Nigerians, especially when it comes to bills that would affect them? What would be your expectations from workers and also citizens as well? Nigerian sector are well represented by professional bodies. You have the Nigerian Society of Engineers. You have the Nigerian, we have Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria. You have resident doctors and associations. You have Nigerian Society of Mining Engineers. Mm -hmm. You have health workers, you have different associations, mm -hmm. bodies. 
most times, as you rightly said, a bill undergoes about five sta four stages or five stages. A proposed bill undergoes the first reading, it goes through the second reading, and is committed to the committee, re relevant committee. The relevant committee now go for public hearing. After public hearing, it comes back to the Senate for the third reading. When it, is, when it passes the third reading, it goes to the president or governor who will ascend it into law. Now, at the position of public hearing, the area of concentration is on individuals related government departments and parastatals and their related associations. If the bill is a bill to repeal a law establishing a university, we want to upgrade the university, just the one I did, upgrading the University of Mine, Institute of Mine, to Federal University of Mining and Technology, just what we will now do is that NUC should be around. When NUC is around, it means the university authorities around. You invite National Institute of Miners, engineers, invite different academicians to attend. And you had when these people, and you also write, there are those who will not come, but they will send in their opinions. They will send in their opinion, whatever by writing. They can send in their opinion to the committee. Normally, the public hearing is advertised. It is placed on not less than three uh, day, national, national dailies, both electronic and print. So there is sufficient communication, apart from the fact that there will be handwritten, handwritten invitation to most of the relevant bodies. And some may not make it, but they will communicate. So I want to tell you that, um, yeah, you may not see too many people on the door of public hearing, but I want to assure you that there are so many interested bodies that will write their opinion as regards the law that is about to be met. But again, I would like to encourage that um, the law is for Nigerians, and the law has a way of affecting Nigerians. And it's encouraged, it, I should, you should encourage the Nigerian public to participate in no small measure, in bringing in relevant contributions that they feel that needs to be contributed for a law that at the end of the day will respect it, the Nigerians should respect and operate by it. If we don't do it and we have brilliant ideas and not communicated, it will affect the productivity or the purpose for which the law is established. So it's encouraging that Nigerians should have keen interest in ensuring that they contribute whenever public hearings are uh, public hearings are on place on a law that has to do with execution of government responsibilities. Talking about law, the minimum wage law was recently assented to by the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Before we talk about the implementation, which many people are actually expectant, um, can we discuss about um, that conversation that has been on even before now, which um, talks about um, um, anything that has to do with labor laws should be moved from exclusive to concurrent lists? And what's the position of the House at the mm, moment? Naturally, um, it's not, it, you would naturally wish that um, minimum wage laws should not be on the ex exclusive legislative list, but it would be good for it to be in the concurrent list. The minimum wage is supposed to be about what an employer should be able to pay his employees. And if somebody would want to make a decision on what he can afford to pay. I think it should be best left for the man that does the employment. When the decision to have a minimum wage is met at a federal level, are you getting what I'm trying to say? And 
you are asking someone to pay his workers a certain amount of money, he might know his capacity. But again, for the purpose of protection, because one time when he's left down there, probably um, there, there, there might, if it is left for every state to decide the minimum wage of their workers, uh, probably we might not be very humane enough. But otherwise, the decision of the payment of the people they employed should solely rest on the employer. You can't sit here and decide what a private company will be paying his staff. But, it's saying, it, but again, it's good for you to guide and say, please, oh, we have a minimum level. Don't go below this. You can go above, but don't go below. So sometimes it's left at the, at, at the exclusively for the purpose of protection and for the purpose of having a general, a general, yeah, a general status for all the employers. That is, please, this is the minimum, but don't go below. You can go above. You had will to go, had liberty to go above, but don't go below. Still talking about welfare. If we agree that. Um there's a lot more that needs to be done than paying much more attention to what the minimum salary a worker should earn should be. There is this issue of social protection. There is this uh, issue of having um, social, social services for not just the working people, even for those that would have probably retired. Um, NSITF is under you, your jurisdiction. Um, in the next couple of few months or years, what should workers be expecting from this um, power state? Yeah, um, the Nigerian Social Insurance Trust Fund. Uh, it's a it, it, it's an it, it's a fund raised for the social protection of the worker in terms of probably hazard and any any casualty that, that takes place while on work or on his way to work while on work, uh, it compensates. As most Nigerians will not know, but in the couple of years to come or days to come, we're going to intensify the registration, compliance and registration of both private and public sector to register their employers because we'll go a long way to provide succor for any staff that any day suffers any misfortune. We would work on that. And I want to assure you that um, all the listed compensations and responsibilities of NSITF, I want to assure you that um, people will need to know how much they are, they are performing. You are in Lagos, you saw even a woman that the husband was drowned dr drowned in an oil company mm -hmm. during work and she was only pregnant but NSITF have to come and pick the child that was delivered after the death of the father paid all the fees took care of the child up to the age of 21 from primary to tertiary institutions and giving allowances to the family people need to know that it happens you know Nigerians in most cases we don't trust what is happening? But I think we have a responsibility of educating. We have a responsibility of ensuring that that law which stipulates the registration and compliance of remittance to NSITF by all registered private and public emplo emplo employers, uh, employers is respected and is adhered to while the responsibility of NSITF would be seen down at time T without delay. So I think we will come across those ones. We do also know that uh, NSITF has been around for over 40 years. You know, it translates from National Provident Fund and so on to what it is now. And some of the laws are obsolete. We would work on the laws and, and make sure the laws give sufficient power to the operators of NSITF so that remittance will be maximized and ensure that um, compensations 
are done adequately and on time. So finally, um, in charge of labor, employment, we know unemployment is the other of the day, not just in Nigeria, mm. it's a global thing. Um, can an average youth be hopeful that there will be an employment opportunity going forward? Mm. Or is there a particular area you want to recommend if, that they should focus yeah, on? If, if, if you look at um, the exponential increase in population of Nigerians, and you look at the exodus of graduates from tertiary institutions and other schools around, you'll all know that it's not possible for all people graduating to be employed. I think we need to change our attitude towards work. We need to change the psyche of our youths from the beginning. That yes, we open up your brain to discover yourself. When you discover who you are, you can you can provide you can you can you can go into practicing ex practicing or establishing where you rate and you become an a provider of employment you read agriculture in the university after reading agriculture you have the knowledge of agriculture for most nigerians from our family backgrounds and you go to school uh, you also read you read agriculture you should be you should be you should be capable of establishing an agricultural outfit you have the knowledge you have the exposure and the system should be in such a way that it should favor you so are there policies yeah, that so um me, that your committee me, is looking out for yeah, think, that would in, that would I encourage think, yeah, this spot, this committee. space but i feel that um our university curriculum or our tertiary school curriculum or even from the secondary school we should encourage entrepreneurship and government should bring policies that will favor people that are going into entrepreneurship. There should be more of curriculum at the lower level to expose Nigerians on the viability of establishing even after school. But if, you, if people graduate and they think you need to come to Abuja and get a job and, and this Abuja cannot carry all, the ministers cannot carry all the graduates from the various universities will get it wrong. I think that is my own policies. Policies that will favor entrepreneurship. Policies that will be that 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 would, would uh, encourage the younger ones after school to desire to go into private sector and provide employment for others. Thank you very much for your time. And that's all we can take on today's edition of the program. Join us next week for a fresh edition of the show. I am Sharon Ijasson. Thanks for watching and remember that labor creates wealth.